Hi, Kev, uh, Leeds Harmonica, uh, Harmonica Miscellanea again. On the subject this week of, oh God, I just realised I've still got my Wurzel Gummidge gloves on. I've just gone in from work. The house is still warming up. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot about improvising. It's a huge subject and it's one that causes newer players a great deal of anxiety because it seems overwhelming and daunting. But I think it's only really that overwhelming and daunting because it's misunderstood. When you're improvising, you're not just receiving divine inspiration from the musical gods and coming up with beautiful stuff. What you're doing is putting into practice a lot of hours of learning that you've already done and many more that you'll do in the future and bringing all your wealth of experience and knowledge together in one place and then having fun with it. I'm going to, just going to talk generally about improvising today then I'm going to do another video on um, some actual practical tips that you can use straight away. The first thing is to be aware that there is a structure to this okay there's there's a road through this isn't just finding yourself in the middle of the Amazon so I've written myself a couple of headings here and I'm just gonna briefly uh, whiz through them like I say practical stuff next time uh, section number one psychology improvising is a bigger psychological challenge than it is a technical challenge because it really feels like you're throwing yourself into the void because that is what it feels like He's like, I, I don't know what I'm doing there. If you jump off that cliff, you haven't thought about it, you haven't prepared, you're going to splat at the bottom, you're going to crash and burn. But if you've spent the previous five years learning all about aerodynamics and parachutes and how to pack your parachutes and doing a million different test jumps, passing qualifications, having other people look at what you're doing and, and whatnot, suddenly you jump off into that void, but you're fine because, oh, I know what to do in this situation. I'm well prepared for this. The structure of the 12 bar blues provides you that parachute of security because you know where you know where it's going they're not going to be surprise chord changes and it's fairly rigid in its definition of what a 12 bar blues is and if you do fall off that structure or if your parachute fails in this increasingly <laughs> daft analogy you don't have to worry anyway because there's a safety net down the bottom the safety net is all of the techniques you've learned, the experience you've gained, your knowledge of music generally and sort of theoretically so you, you can understand what's happening, your knowledge of rhythm, your knowledge of timing, and importantly, strategies for getting out of the parachute won't open situation. And fortunately, there are some, and I'm going to talk about them next week. So the point of that is to say this is psychologically challenging, but you need to understand that you have a lot of support in place and a lot of things that you can draw from. Instead of being daunting and overwhelming, it should be really exciting because this is where it's going to get real. You're going to really start putting stuff that you've learned into practice in, 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 a, in a wonderful and unique way because every improvisation is different. That's one of the cool things about this. It's you're creating on the spot something that's never been done before. And that's an amazing thing. You probably couldn't reproduce it if you wanted to. And just for those few seconds, that was the music you were making. Call me a hippie. Whatever. Right, on to number three, which is the scales of success. <laughs> I've been torturing people with this for a while. Okay. 
So if you imagine a pair of scales, when you first start to try a new technique, your failure uh, end of the scale is going to be absolutely full and your success area is going to be empty. Well, actually, your failure, it's not going to be absolutely full. They're both going to be empty to begin with. But what's going to happen is that the failure side of the scale will start to fill up with times you failed. I, I'm not entirely happy with my use of the word failure here, by the way, because it's a bit dismissive and it, it doesn't say exactly what I mean, but I couldn't think of a better one. So you try and you try and failure starts to fill up and before you know it, your scales are looking like that. But successes start creeping in and eventually your successes will bring it back to an equilibrium and eventually overtake them. And soon you're once you're at this point, your successes at this point are going to so massively outweigh your failures, failures that you're hardly going to be able to do it wrong. That said, you'll never get rid of the failures entirely. There's always going to be failures. Always, always, always. I've just thought that might be better expressed as a graph. Bringing us to part four. The... Decision you make when you decide to learn harmonica or any instrument is to embark on a process. This isn't something that has an end point. It isn't the case that one day you can't improvise and the next you can. It doesn't work that way. You won't even notice yourself learning. You'll learn at your own speed. You'll make your own mistakes and you'll learn from your own mistakes. You'll talk to other players, uh, teachers and get advice and benefit from their experience and everybody has their own way through this people often ask me I still I still haven't got the hang of this improvising it's like it's killing me it's it's stymieing my progress and it isn't because you're most likely doing really really well it's just that it's taking longer than you want it to and we don't get to choose it doesn't end you know, it's good to have personal targets, like, for example, all right, I want to be good enough that I feel confident I can get up with my friend and do a jam at the pub. Brilliant target. Uh, but once you've done that, you're going to be wondering what the next thing is. There's no end to this. There's too many lifetimes worth of study. In improvisation alone, I would suggest. I mean, if you want to get really scared about improvisation, try reading some jazz books. <laughs> But hopefully what I've done here is kind of demystified a little bit by saying that there's structure and, and elements that we can use here. And then next time I'm going to give you some helpful tips. And in the meantime, uh, I'd love to hear your experiences improvising, your successes, your failures, techniques that were useful for you, anything like that. We can have, uh, have a chat about it in the comments. That's cool. And I am... Gonna go make myself a nice hot drink and I'll see you all next week. Cheers.